start the conversation with you, Emmanuel. Of course, you tag us threatening a strike. You came earlier, so I have to start my conversation with you. You have to understand. <laughs> so you tag us threatening a strike if government does not cease illegal mining with immediate effect. Minos Commission has spoken that if government should do so, it will affect the country in a way. And so government will have to take gradual measures and not, you know, instant measures. For you, this is your political party, and people are coming for your political party's head. But it should be a nationalistic fight. At this point, what do you think that your party can do to help fight this menace? Well, thank you very much, Rosalind. Uh, once again, a very good morning to your cherished viewers. Uh, let me first of all start with uh, our flag bearers filing yesterday. He did file yesterday and he was very emphatic after the filing. And one thing that got me triggered yesterday was the fact that he was very straightforward to tell the electoral commissioner that he wants this election to be free and fair and very transparent. So that tells you that he's a man of integrity. He believes in transparency. Again, right from the electoral commission's office, he came to the party headquarters where he addressed the party faithfuls and all Ghanaians. And there was one emphatic thing that he stated that has to do with the foundation that he has laid and it's very important that in every facet you find yourself, where you have a dream, your dream will not just materialize at a point. You need to first and foremost lay a foundation and then upgrade on that foundation to where you want that dream to, you know, get to. So that was what he actually pointed out to us yesterday. And he actually encouraged everybody that was present yesterday and those who watched as well. And another signal that he sent to every party faithful is that, including all those who watch, is that let's get to the ghettos, let's get to the markets, let's get to every area, let's tell them about the good works of the MPP. And we all know the good works of the MPP. As far as he as a digitalization man, I have said it on countless occasions that no vice president in the history of Ghana can tout himself as a man of integrity. And whilst we continue this, let me throw this challenge to my colleague that I would be very grateful that this election is not... So, so if you don't mind, we, I, I, we, I we, we into, need to delve into yeah, it. So I, I'll, I'll, zoom, I'll give you just 30 I'll seconds. Zoom into because, your, I'll zoom because, into your issue. Yeah, we quickly. need to delve into it. Whilst we dive into the issues, I want to throw this challenge to him that before we leave this studio, I'll appreciate that he tell us at least just three policies that John Dramani Mahama implemented when he was a vice president. Just three policies. Okay, so, this, so, so what it is is that, so we go to our topic, and yeah. I, I really so wish... So on, on the part of our topic... Of my, before you continue, for the sake of our viewers, today we are fighting a national pro problem, and uh, we want to devoid from this whole thing of, oh, and this policy. When we bring topics on policies, we will throw policies in. When we bring topics on manifesto, we'll throw the manifestos in. Let's talk about Galamsey. It's very important. People are giving birth to people, children with cleft. People are dying. We can only clear mercury from our water after a thousand years. We are not going to swear on our topic. Thank I'm you. very, very concerned when it comes to the issue of Galamsey, and it saddens me as far as the issue of Galamsey is concerned. Let me appreciate the effort of our traditional rulers. Key among them is the effort being put out by Otumfo and other chiefs who are actually fighting the cause of this Galamse menace. Again, I want to also commend the effort of the civil society groups as well. For me as a person and coming from a political party who do not believe that this problem must continue. I must say that this morning, I'll call a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. Let's put everything politics behind us and let's face the reality because our water bodies are being destroyed. Mm -hmm. 
it has a dire consequence on our future. Now, I've seen a, a, a release issued by UTAC yesterday. I applaud them for that release that they did. But I had I have a different message to them as well. You know, it, it, it's good when it comes at this point and civil society groups begin to issue, communicate as to what their position are. But I also think that it could have also been in a, an equal measure when we see the wrong also being meted out. We equally issue releases. Mm. Because we've been in this country, 2020, when some group of people whom we know, led by Koku Bwahene, were in a Galamse pit, sent by John Dramani Mahama, campaigning and encouraging illegal miners to continue with the activities of Galamse. I'm saying that we are going to call a spade a spade because I believe that the issue of Galamse is not one person's effort. It cannot be resolved just by one person. It must be a collective effort. So you've seen, you said we've seen a video. Yes, there is a video. A video that's circulating. Yes, okay. this video popped up somewhere September, October mm. 2020. Mm. And I have not seen the media comment about this video. I have not seen the civil society condemn these people. Mm -hmm. But the civil society, the media, they have always remained resolute in ensuring that they speak when the government is not doing its best, so as far as the Galam say. Oh, these people were encouraging the illegal man. They were actually in the pit where the Galam say is being done. And they were encouraging They were encouraging them because they wanted votes at that time. They were encouraging them to actually do what they were doing because they felt that whatever measures that were put in place by the MPP is not to the interest of those people. But in our quest to mm -hmm. fight this, mm -hmm. I believe that the government cannot be largely blamed. The government has done its best. And I must say that in the history of this country, of course, the fight has not been completely fought well. However, the government has meted out measures that we believe that could help in resolving this fight. Mm. When we came in 2017, Operation Vanguard was launched. And I can tell you confidently that over 1,500 arrests were done. Mm -hmm. In the same 2020 election, so the arrests were done, right? Arrests were done. Who, who, and we who, had who over... Who were those arrested? These were illegal miners. Okay, so now it brings me to the question I wanted to ask. No, but, but hold on. You can okay. put down your, your point. No, when, put it down. Because when I you do that, it, it looks like you interject me and I may I'll, lose my, okay, my, continue, my, my continue, issues. Continue. continue. Now, okay. over 1,500 arrests were made. Mm -hmm. And these are illegal miners. And people were equally fined. And government actually had... 100 million as fines from these people. Now, within 2020, we had a former president who, again, because of votes, went to the chiefs somewhere within the Western region, promising them that he will grant this illegal manners amnesty when he's voted into power. In this case, the question I ask myself is, the fight against Galamse, is it just the issue of MPP to fight or is a collective interest? This is a president who says that he wants the interest of the people, yet he's saying that we should give people second chance. Mm. The MPP as a party does not or is not happy with the way the Galamse issue is, is going about. However, the measures have been put in place. But one thing that I can say confidently is that 
the NDC, as a political party, did not show much commitment during their time. Of course, a five-member tax, a five-member committee was put in place where the former Interior Minister, Honorable Mark Woyongo, we had uh, the current MP, uh, what's his name, uh, Mahama Yariga, and the likes. Otia J, they were all part of this committee. What happened? They failed woefully. To the extent that Honorable Mahama Yariga has to now tell us that the fight is not something that is so easy. He gave up mm. because he realized that the fight is even stronger than he himself. Now, the question I ask is that at that moment, as a political party, you could not do anything about the fight. But when the MPP came to power, we actually commissioned a committee in place, gave them the resources to ensure that those who involve themselves in such illegal acts are arrested and fined. But the, 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 the other way around, you have another party making a U-turn, telling them that, no, continue with what you are doing. When I come, I will grant you an amnesty to give you a second chance. It is a bad faith. Okay. So, um, I that... have noticed okay. that the fight against Galamse is bigger than anybody because it is like a wildfire or a burning bush that if we don't approach the algebraic expression, you know when, when you are doing elective mass, I, I don't know if it is even in commas, if you are doing algebraic expression, we have either elimination method or start, uh, substitution method. Now in these two methods, when you are using elimination method, you are trying to get your answer at a point when you feel that the measures put in place in order for you to arrive at your solution, you are not getting it. Mm -hmm. You must do everything possible. Bring in your own calculation. Bring in your own methods just to make sure that at the end of the day, you achieve results. Okay. So I am appealing to everybody that we must combat this disease. For me, I call, I see it as a disease, a canker. Mm. We must combat it with a tactic that I believe that with all the aggression, particularly with the measures being put up by our flag bearer, His Excellency Dr. Alaji Mahmoudou Baumia, by ensuring that enough data is provided by the geological service. All right, now I can come in because I think you've spoken for a while. Let me ask you this. Now, there's also, uh, about two years ago, we saw Professor from Pom Bratton's report yeah. that mentioned certain persons who are high. Government didn't do anything about it. As of now, two years down the line, we are still investigating into it. Nothing has been done. Nobody has been held accountable out of it. Yet, we are hearing that, yes, these minors, we have these young minors who are being arrested. Now, what happened to those at the top? Because if we don't fight to those who can afford these, uh, you know, minerals that is being used and it's harmful to our health, most of these young illegal miners who come in, yes, it's wrong for them to do what they're doing, but they have been employed by people who are wealthy, people who can afford to buy these, these minerals. That is causing harm to our life, causing harm to our water bodies, but we haven't seen a single arrest of anybody that's name has been mentioned or a single person that we have heard that is being investigated with regards to illegal mining. Now, yesterday we saw certain videos of our forest reserves that is being touched, that is causing our water bodies to be polluted, that's causing us to lose trees. And we have seen that certain great companies that is backed by certain people have access to these forest reserves. It's, it's called forest reserve for a reason. They have the opportunity to go and mine in there. Cocoa farms are being broken down. They are being bought. Let me put it like that. They are being bought from these cocoa farmers who can't afford it by people who have the money. And these are people who are well-to-do. Who are we fighting? The small ones or the top? Well, thank you. I think that with what um, Honorable Frimpo Boati said, 
for me, I do not want to go into his report or whatsoever. But to some extent, the question I ask is, I don't know if you are aware that Ekwe Wusi mentioned that his own son was involved in the Ganamse issue. Whose son? Frimpo Buante. Mm -hmm. His own son was involved. So, so, so did the MPP government I am, I am, investigate I am, I am building a point. I okay. am building a point. His own son was involved in this Ganamse menace. So it would have been nice if his name was also in that report. Moving forward. No, wouldn't it be Moving fair? Forward. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, let's not move forward here. We are trying to solve a problem. Wouldn't it be fair that if Professor Frimpon Boating issued a report, mentioned certain names, then there is a name of Professor Frimpon Boating's son mentioned. There is an investigation that comments on it rather than shove it down the carpet. Because if Professor Frimpon Boating's son is into illegal mining, government has every right to investigate him. Government has every right to investigate his report as well. What, what I know of for a fact, every individual, as far as that report is concerned, the state agencies that are responsible for this investigation were commissioned to do so. They and are aware happened? of the former regional secretary of the Western region, Honorable Charles Bissu. <laughs> they investigated the case. OSP even came into it. Who was the result? Has there been any prosecution? It tells you that it is, it, it is actually baseless. There was no substance that was discovered. Because I believe that if indeed the OSP discovered anything, then he would have been prosecuted. Okay, so there were a lot of names that were mentioning the vanguard operation. Now, this is what Rosely, you looks has like to say you keep about it. No, I just want to say something. I'm begging you. So, so I'll come. I'll, I'll move to Honourable Awantin very soon because I have to go. So let me quickly say this. Now, one thing that Utah is saying is that Operation Vanguard and Operation Flashout have been monumental failures. Now, we made mention of Oper Operation Vanguard being something. And UTAG has no affiliation with any political party. I'll come back to you. We can think through that. And let me go to Honorable Timothy. But, 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 but yes. you, you didn't allow me to complete. No, no. But you time. come back because it's actually, you've spoken for 30 minutes, actually. No, but you keep interjecting No, me. I only asked you once. No, no. You, no it wasn't just spoke, once. No, you spoke, you for, you spoke for about me. 15 minutes before I came, Honestly, I came it, to you. It's you been know a while that. I saw no, so At least you could have given me the no, time. You have more time. I'll come back to you. Let me bring Honorable in. <laughs> 